Adventures in Time and Space, told in future tense. Dimension X. Have you ever heard of the Mark III? The amazing electronic brain they're using now up at Harvard University. In mere minutes, it can solve scientific problems that our most brilliant mathematicians would take years to work out. Its intelligence is almost superhuman. And yet the scientists are already working on a new and improved model, the Mark IV. In fact, they tell us there's no earthly reason why these thinking robots can't be perfected until they become the servants of the future, capable of doing all the work of mankind. Yes, that's what the advertising billboard said in the year 2006. Housework made easy by the perfect domestic servant, Modern Mechanicals Agency, Harry Underhill, President. The billboard showed a smiling family, sitting with folded hands, watching their mechanical robot pour their morning coffee. But in the home of Harry Underhill himself, things weren't quite as pleasant at breakfast this day. I just can't understand it, Aurora. Look at this. Modern mechanical's down three points. And yesterday, Smithson canceled his order. If I could only figure out why. Why don't you ask him? Oh, Frank, dear, eat your oatmeal. Oh, Mom. I just don't understand it. Business was good, and then boom. Some louse must be undercutting my prices, that's all. How many robots were canceled? Not robots. Mechanicals, Aurora. How many times... They are I... robots, aren't they? Please, Aurora, there's an important difference in sales psychology. Maybe between... people are getting wise to your robots and mechanicals. What do you mean, Aurora? The perfect domestic servant. <laughs> They're ugly, stupid, clumsy, walking junk piles. Aurora. The one you brought home to me can't even wash the clothes properly. It's more trouble than it's worth. Aurora. You know our mechanicals are the best on the market. Those animated tin cans you sell? <laughs> They're certainly not making us any fortune. Well, with this new model, things are bound to pick up a little. If that Jarvis order just comes through. Oh, that robot of yours. There's something knocking again. Hey, wait, wait. Put that plate back. I haven't finished my breakfast yet. Wait! Harry, you know you've got to say stop. 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 Hmm. <sighs> You always get excited. You think you never saw a robot before. Not robot. Mechanical. All right, all right. Look, it's not its fault. We just took too long to eat. Timing relay is set for 15 minutes. Oh, never mind. I want my coffee back. Set. Set. There. Isn't that simple? It bends at the waist. Stretches out its arm. And picks up the coffee pot just as if it were your... Hey, watch out! And spills it right in your lap! Oh, my <laughs> clean suit, Aurora! Oh, no! Harry, you know it's relayed to announce dinner after it sets the table. Hey, there goes my coffee again. Stop! Stop! Set! Harry, you can't give it two orders at once. What's that smell? There must be a short. Now see what you've done. Got it all upset. I did. All I said was... Stop! 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 Oh, it's no use. The brain coil shorted out. Well, do something. Harry, do Me, something. Me, I sure will. I'm going to the office. I'm getting out of here. Yes, Lucy? Mr. Jarvis, I'm... Oh, put him on. Hello, Underhill. Hello, Mr. Jarvis. I'm glad you called. I was just going to ring you. Well, I've got that whole shipment of mechanicals for you. One gross plane, a dozen of the chromium fitted. Hold on, Underhill. I'm canceling the order. You're ca But the invoice is made out and well, I... Well, tear it up. I'm canceling. But why? Underhill, there's a brand new mechanical on the market that makes yours look like something out of a museum. Oh, now, look here, Mr. Oh, Jarvis. Don't look me, Underhill. I've seen them, and I'm telling you it'll put you out of business. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, Mr. Underhill? Mm. That's the third cancellation today. The world's going to pot. Yes, Mr. Underhill? Hmm? No, never mind, Lucy. I'm going home. What a day. I wonder if Aurora would smell it on me if I ducked into Garrigan's. She's got a nose like a beagle. Hey! That building wasn't here last week. 
Humanoid Institute, the perfect mechanical. <laughs> oh, no. We didn't have enough competition. Hey, these must be the cutthroats that are underselling me. At your service, Mr. Underhill. Huh? Oh, you startled me. <laughs> didn't hear you. Hey, you're a mechanical, aren't you? Not bad, not bad. Very lifelike. Won't you come in, please, and examine our service? Yeah, that's a remarkable voice. They've licked the variable inflection problem. You know, I'm in the same line myself. Uh, mechanicals, I mean. We're aware of that, sir. Oh? Huh. Hey, some building you've got here. You sure got it up in a hurry. The Humanoid Institute at your service, Mr. Underhill. Yes? Oh, uh, how'd you know my name? For us, that was not difficult. Oh, is that so? Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. This is ridiculous, talking to a mechanical. Must be somebody inside operating you by remote control. No, Mr. Underhill. Of course, there is Humanoid Central, which powers and controls all of us, but that is located on Wing 4. Wing 4? A planet in a remote part of the galaxy. Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, may I see your salesman, please? We employ no human salesman, sir. We ourselves can accept your order for immediate humanoid service. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't expect me to buy one. I'm in the business myself. There will be no more need for your electronic mechanical, sir. Once you have accepted our service, you will no longer have to work. Everything will be done for you. Everything? <laughs> That's quite an offer. At that rate, you'll have trouble supplying the demand. I think not, sir. As you can see from our storage room. Humanoids are now arriving at the rate of 5,000 per hour from wing four. 5,000 per hour? We are anxious to introduce our complete service on this planet, sir, to bring happiness to everyone. May we come out to your home for a free trial demonstration? No, I... Oh, I admit you're remarkable. The, the voice and movement, graceful even. But I'm still in business, and what's more, I wouldn't have you around the house. I'm afraid you will have no choice. Sooner or later, it will be necessary. Oh, is that so? Over my dead body, let me out of here. At your service, Mr. Underhill. Hmm. That's going to be tough competition, all right. Uh, I'm going to stop in at Garrigan's, the devil with Aurora's nose. Oh, hi, Pop. Hello, Frank. How was the football game? We won. 78 to 3. Guess what, Pop? You made all the touchdowns. Nope. Mom took in a border. She took... She what? Aurora! She said if your business was going to fall on his face, she had to do something to make some money. Oh, she did, huh? Harry, what's all the racket for? You, you tell me. What's this about a border? Oh, shh, Harry. He's going to live in that little apartment over the garage. Oh, no, he isn't. You know I don't want any strangers around here. Oh, Harry, please, shh. Look, he won't bother you. He's a nice old man. Oh. He just wanted a room and a place to work. He's an inventor, I think. Oh, he is, is he? Did he pay in advance? Well, he can't. You see, his mm. royalties haven't started to come in. Mm-hmm. Aurora, how can you be taken in by every beat-up old panhandler that gives you a sob story? Oh, Mr. Sledge isn't like that at all. Oh, that reminds me, dear. Can you give me a ten? A ten? What for? Well, Mr. Sledge is ill. He needs some medicine for his heart, and I said I'd lend him the money. You get... Oh, Aurora, this is the limit. He goes out right now. Now, don't be unkind, Harry. Besides, we need the rent money. Things aren't that bad yet. He goes. Please, shh. What are you shushing me for? Mr. Sledge, he's in the next room. I've invited him for dinner. Oh. Frank, dear, wipe him off. Oh, Mom. More gravy, Mr. Sledge? No, thank you, Mrs. Underhill. Mr. Sledge, my wife tells me you're a traveling man. Uh, expect to move on soon? Harry. I had hoped to do a little work, Mr. Underhill. You see, I've applied for basic patents here on Earth for a very important development. Oh, a new invention, huh? Yes. My field is rhodomagnetics. Rhodo what? Rhodomagnetics. It's a new force field theorem, key to the second triad of the periodic table. Rhodium, ruthenium, and palladium. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a little rusty on my science. It's well known in other parts of the galaxy, but I've been able to apply for basic patents here. Worth uh, millions, huh? 
Perhaps you find it strange that the holder of such valuable property should be in need. Well, uh, yes. I'm a refugee, Mr. Underhill. I arrived on this planet only a few days ago. Mm-hmm. But you will be uh, shoving on again. Oh, for goodness sakes, Harry. That's all right, Mrs. Underhill. I understand. After all, I am an intruder in your home. And if it inconveniences you at all, I'll find some other place to sleep and set up my workshop. Oh. Harry, your robot is spilling the coffee again. I'll have to have it tightened up. Why doesn't your company bring out a better mechanical? One smart enough not to spill things. Wouldn't that be splendid? The perfect mechanical already exists, Mrs. Underhill. They're not so splendid, really. They are why I am a refugee today. Oh? Where did you say you came from? Wing 4. Wing 4? Oh, then you must mean those humanoids. Humanoid. Mr. Sledge. Humanoid. What do you know about them? Well, they just opened an agency here in Two Rivers. No. No. <gasps> Harry. What is it? Well, what's wrong, Mr. Sledge? Give him some water. It must be his heart. Call, call Dr. Windows, Aurora. No, no. I'll be all right. Here, you better sit down. <sighs> Sorry, it was just shock. I came here to get away from them. The, the humanoids? Yes. I wanted to finish my work before they came. But now, I won't trouble you any further. But Mr. Sledge, Harry, he's sick. Well, uh, Mr. Sledge, I don't think you'll have to go right away. He can stay, Harry. Sure, after all. The way those humanoids are coming along, I'm liable to become a refugee myself any minute. <laughs> Guess we might as well stick together, eh, Sledge? Oh, that's better. Oh, you look ill, Professor. Maybe you ought to lie down on the sofa and rest. No, no, thank you. I must get back to my workshop now. I haven't got time to rest. There's so little time left for all of us. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Underhill. Good morning. Mr. Underhill, you look awful. I feel awful. What's in the mail? Six more cancellations. Mm. The Eat Quick restaurant chain sent back your shipment. They've installed humanoids. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre from the bank called. He's refusing your loan. He said since Humanoid Institute opened, you're a bad credit risk. Great. I guess that's all. Oh, there's somebody... Something to see you. At your service, Mr. Underhill. You? Oh, no, you're not the same one, are you? Serial number's different. It doesn't matter, sir. We're all really one. Now, in exchange for our complete service, you will assign all your property to Humanoid Institute. I will what? With our service, you will have no need for property. Everything will be provided. What kind of blackmail is this? No blackmail, sir. You will find humanoids incapable of committing any crime. We exist only to increase the happiness of mankind. Thanks, but I can take care of my own business. You have no choice, really. With humanoid service, it is no longer necessary for men to take care of themselves. Our function is to serve and obey and guard men from harm. Get out. Very well, sir. When you wish to sign, let us know. Get out. Get out! Aurora, I'm home. At your service, Mr. Underhill. What? What's the idea of this? You get out of here. Aurora! Mrs. Underhill has accepted our free trial demonstration. We cannot leave unless she requests... We'll see about that. Aurora, where the devil are you? Oh, hello, Harry. What's this mechanical doing? What's happened to you? Isn't it wonderful? I had my hair done, the manicure. But, but, the humanoid did it and cleaned the house all over, washed all the clothes and gave Frank his music lesson. Now, wait a minute, Aurora. I, I won't... Have this monster in my house. Oh, it's just a free trial, Harry. Just wait till you taste the dinner it cooked. Everything you like best, roast duck. I don't care if he cooked a... Duck? And the most complicated pastries. I could never cook like that. Uh, well, might as well eat. But I'll need a drink first, though. All right, Doctor. I'm sorry, sir. What? We exist under the prime directive to guard men from harm. Alcoholic beverages in excess are bad for human consumption. We have taken the liberty of removing them from the house. Now, look here. Mr. You Underhill, think... dinner is served. Ah! 
Yes, Lucy? They're here, Mr. Underhill. I've been expecting them for a week. All right, Lucy. At your service, Mr. Underhill. We have the legal papers here, the bankruptcy forms, the eviction notice. We are ready now to foreclose your agency. Okay, take it over. A lot of good it'll do you. I haven't made a sale in two weeks. And now, if you will make the assignment of all your personal property, we can complete our service to you. What if I won't sign? That would be unfortunate. But with stubborn cases, we must sometimes resort to other methods. Eventually, Mr. Underhill, you will sign. Of all the darn, 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 hey, stinking hey, darn... Hey, whoa, 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 Frank, what's the matter? What's the trouble, son? That old humanoid. Oh, you're not happy? You should be. It's guaranteed. They took away my football. Hmm. They said it was too dangerous to play with it. And my roller skates and my scout knife and everything. Did they leave you anything? Just some stinking old plastic blocks. Soft blocks. They said I couldn't get hurt with them. Dad, I want my football back. Can't you do anything? I don't know, son. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Underhill. Mind if I come in, Sledge? No, not at all. You mind if I keep working? Oh, go right ahead. It's good to see somebody working with his hands. Is something wrong? My son. The humanoids took his football away. They're everywhere. They've smashed my business, taken over my house. Sledge, isn't there some way to get rid of them? That is exactly what I am trying to do. You? What makes you think you can do anything? Because, you see, Mr. Underhill, I'm the unfortunate fool who started them. You? I don't understand. I started the humanoids. And I've been running from them ever since. You started them? Yes, I invented them. I built the ronomagnetic relays that operate Humanoid Central. But, but why? I... I wanted to bring happiness to humanity. <laughs> happiness? <laughs> That's great. My wife's been crying for two days. And do you know why? Because she's bored stiff. There's nothing left for her to do. They won't even let her lift a little finger. I don't blame you for feeling bitter, Mr. Underhill. It's all my fault. I wanted them to serve and obey. Guard men from harm. No, they do that all right. They've even emptied our medicine chest. It wouldn't do for one of us happy humans to end it all with a sleeping pill. Mr. Underhill, I've made the most terrible mistake a man can make. But I meant well, believe me. Then why did you do it? I thought I could rid the universe of poverty and hunger by inventing the perfect mechanical. Uh, they're perfect, all right. Too perfect. Yes. That's the trouble. They obey the prime directive too literally. They kill men's souls with their kindness. Oh, isn't there some way they can be controlled? No. I didn't trust mankind, so I made sure that Humanoid Central could not be tampered with. Not even by myself. Uh, then, then what hope is there? Only one. They are not creative. They can't meet new ideas. You mean you've got one, Sledge? Yes. They can defeat anything they know about. But I've got something new. A weapon to attack the brain of Humanoid Central. Is that what you've been working on? Yes. Now that they're here, there's little time left. Either we destroy them, or they will destroy us. Okay. What has to be done? This tuning circuit. Mm -hmm. You see, I need two bus bars here. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you read these diagrams? I think so. Got my degree in electronics. Good. If you could help on the bench work, it would save time. Uh -huh. I've got plenty of time now. All right. But watch yourself. Don't let them see you come out here. If you can take the risk, so can I. No. As the inventor, I built a special immunity for myself into Humanoid Central. But you don't have that immunity. They're rather unpleasant methods of dealing with their enemies. They can change you, you know. Change me? How? brain surgery. What do you mean? Never mind. Just be careful.
Mr. Underhill. Hmm? Uh, what do you want? You're going to meet with Mr. Sledge. Uh, y- yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to collect the rent. Mr. Underhill, you have spent the past two afternoons in his room. In view of your association with Mr. Sledge, we feel that our free trial must be terminated. We suggest that you accept our total service and make the assignment of your property immediately. And if I don't? Then, sir, we may be forced to resort to other methods. Well, uh, g- give me one more day to think it over. Very well, sir. Tomorrow. That will be your last chance. Is it? Underhill. Did they see you? No, not today. Instead, we've got to hurry. It's difficult work, Mr. Underhill, but I'm almost finished. They gave me till today. They said they'd use other methods. What's that? The humanoids building some kind of a warehouse across the road. Sledge, are you sure this thing will work? It's a new principle, Underhill. A tuned rotomagnetic light beam. It should act to fission the heavy atoms of the basic ores and wing four. It will destroy humanoid central. But are you sure? I know the humanoids. I made them. They can't invent anything. They can't create defenses against something new. Ah. It's done. It's finished, Underhill. You going to use it now? Immediately. I'll have to feed the astronomical data into the calculating circuits. There must be zero error in focusing. What will happen? Wing four will disappear in a chain reaction. Humanoid central will be destroyed. They'll stop. Ready now. Stand clear, please. Power's building up. Step on the rubber net, Mr. Underhill. Mm-hmm. We must be shielded when I cut in the full power load. Hurry, Sledge. I've waited 30 years for this moment, Underhill. When Wing 4 is destroyed, the humanoids all over the galaxy will stop. They'll stop dead. You won't hear those drills. Sledge. All right. Now. anything? Sledge, listen. The drills have stopped. They've stopped. You can see them. The humanoids have stopped. They couldn't guard against something they couldn't understand. It worked under you. We're free now. Goodbye, Wing Four. The humanoid Central is destroyed. At your service, Mr. Underhill. No, Sledge. Get out of here. Get out. You were attempting to break the prime directive. It is therefore necessary to interfere. But you, you stopped. I saw you, all of you. In order to guard against Mr. Sledge's beam, it was necessary to stop all units momentarily to concentrate power. That necessity has passed. But it was new. You can't invent anything new. No, sir, but we were able to adapt the screening principle you yourself invented. For the past 30 years, Humanoid Central has been screened against any energy attack. All these years wasted. All these years? Your immunity has ended, Mr. Sledge. It will now be necessary for you to accept our full service. No. No, I'll stop you. I'll stop all of you. No, Sledge. I'll stop you with my bare hands. I'll kill you Sledge, all. No, it's no use. Yeah, Do not yeah. worry, Mr. Underhill. At worst, he can yeah. destroy one unit. There are millions more. Sledge, you'll hurt yourself. Sledge. Oh. I'll kill him. I... He's sick. It's his heart. You, get a doctor. Until he surrenders, we can neither aid nor hinder Mr. Sledge. Do you surrender your immunity, Mr. Sledge? Have to. Last chance. Gone. Yes, yes. Help me. Help me. At your service, Mr. Sledge. You may see Mr. Sledge now, Mr. Underhill. Alone? If you wish. In here. Thanks. Sledge. Well, well, Underhill. Good to see you. Your head. It's it's bandaged. Is it really? They've done something to you. 
for you, all right? Oh, fine, fine. Never felt better. You never felt better? No. In fact, I feel ten years younger today. You sound so... so happy. Why not? These humanoids have made a new man of me, Underhill. They're wonderful, aren't they? Wonderful? How can you say that, Sledge? Only yesterday you hated them. You were trying to destroy them. Destroy them? Why? You don't remember? You've forgotten what they're doing to us all? They're killing us with kindness, taking away all our incentive and pride of accomplishment, turning us all into pampered, useless pets, parasites, with nothing left to do but just sit with folded hands at the mercy of these mechanical monsters. At your service, Mr. Underhill. You. You seem troubled, Mr. Underhill. Are you unhappy? Unhappy? You bet I'm unhappy. What have you done to Professor Sledge to turn him into this babbling idiot? We were forced to operate. For years, Mr. Sledge has been suffering from a benign tumor of the brain. It caused him to have hallucinations, to believe that he was actually the creator of the humanoid. Did I? Yes. It was these delusions which were making you unhappy. Oh. <laughs> well, whoever did invent the humanoids, I certainly owe him a debt of gratitude now. Sledge. You see, Mr. Underhill, we have ways to correct these abnormal conditions. Even Mr. Sledge is happy now. You... You operated on his brain? Yes, Mr. Underhill. And now we are at your service. At my service? You mean you're going to operate on... No. The time has come for you to accept and enjoy our complete service. You will now sign our agreement. Look here, I... If you are unhappy... It only takes a simple operation. No, no. Who, who said I was unhappy? I'm very happy. I'll sign your paper. You don't have to operate on me. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Very happy. The happy Mr. Underhill's futile hands clenched and relaxed again, and then folded quietly. There was nothing else left for them to do. You have just heard the Jack Williamson story with folded hands, an adventure in time, Space and the unknown world of the future, the world of Dimension X. Now, about next week, do you believe that in the mind of man there lies a force potentially more powerful than the atomic bomb? And perhaps someday, in the not too distant future, a man sitting quietly in his room, just thinking, may generate enough mental energy to control the destiny of the world. How? We'll tell you next week. Tonight's story on Dimension X was adapted for radio by John Dunkel. Featured in the cast were Philip Borniff as Harry Underhill, Alexander Scorby as the humanoid, Peter Capel as Professor Sledge and Brian Rayburn as Aurora. Your host was Norman Rose. Tomorrow, hear Sam Spade. Now, it's Truth or Consequences on NBC.